Good Monday evening, October 7th, and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Here are a few of the stories we have coming up for you tonight. Wenatchee Valley Technical Skills Center students are now more equipped for their future careers in film and television, thanks to a $10,000 grant. The Brave Warrior Project, a local nonprofit that supports families and individuals affected by disabilities and chronic illness, raised $130,000 at the third annual shine a light auction. Our nice weather continues through Wednesday, cooler Thursday and Friday, and then unseasonably warm temperatures are expected this weekend. All your weather details are straight ahead. The search is ongoing for a 54-year-old Moses Lake man, Richard Smith, who was last seen on the morning of October 3rd when he told his girlfriend that he was going fishing at Potholes Reservoir. His truck was found at Medicare Beach and his tackle box and boat flotation device were located on Saturday. A search effort was conducted in the area yesterday, but there was no sign of Smith. Anyone with information is asked to call the Grant County Sheriff's Office Smith is 5 foot 9 inches tall, weighs approximately 180 pounds. He's bald with a white goatee and was last seen wearing blue Adidas running pants and a shirt and jacket of unknown colors. The Wenatchee City Council will weigh a proposed budget on Thursday that bumps spending only modestly for 2025. The 2025 budget plan unveiled this week shows an increase in general fund spending of just under $400,000 from $36.4 million to $36.8 million. The biggest percentage increase comes in the city's contract to pay for public defense with more than $500,000 added to pay lawyers to defend indigent clients in county and municipal court. General revenues are also expected to rise from $35.1 million this year to $35.9 million in 2025. Applications are now being accepted for the open seat on Leavenworth City Council. The seat was previously held by Rona Barron, who was elected to the seat in 2023. Qualified applicants must be registered voters, reside within city limits, and have lived within city limits for at least one year. The appointed individual will serve the remainder of the term beginning in November to December 31st, 2025. Interested residents must submit a letter of interest outlining relevant experience and qualifications and the application, which can be found on the city website by 4 p.m. on October 25th to City Clerk Andrea Fisher. Wenatchee Valley Technical Skills Center students are now more equipped for their future careers in film and television. The Digital Media Arts Program was awarded a $10,000 grant from Film Workforce Development to buy three new monitors and cameras. The district says the goal of the new equipment is to give the students hands-on experience using professional-grade equipment. The cameras are the same models used by NCW Life, and digital media students have previously worked for our state during athletic coverage. The cameras will be used for live streaming, local concerts, sporting events, and student productions to create content for the program's website and social media. When we come back, the Wenatchee Public Library is hosting a live stream with a best-selling author on Thursday. And Saturday marked the 93rd anniversary of the first non-stop Trans-Pacific flight from Misawa, Japan to East Wenatchee. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Enjoy the sounds of summer from your very own pool and spa. Blue Lagoon is now scheduling pool installations for this summer. Call today to schedule a free consultation for a custom San Juan fiberglass pool. And let the experts at Blue Lagoon handle the construction, installation, and regular maintenance. Turn your boring backyard into vacation paradise this summer with industry-leading San Juan pool. No need to go off the deep end. Relax knowing you're in great hands with Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa. I'm Keith Gaynor, running to be your next 12th District State Senator. It has been a privilege to serve you the past six years in the House of Representatives. I believe public safety is a critical issue that affects all of Washington. This should be one of our highest priorities. Washington families are struggling. Housing, food, and gas prices are severely affecting our budgets. We need to find better ways to support our families. Together, 
we can build a better Washington. How do you think like an entrepreneur? I have had it in mind starting my own business. This is all really good to know right now. I am currently making a vision board. I am talking about my well-being, my personal finances, and habits that I would like to work on and to improve myself to be a better entrepreneur. We in Northeast Washington are proud of our small town heritage, but Olympia's one-size-fits-all policies have made life here more difficult. I'm former Mayor Suing Moody, and for the past 13 years, I fought for the needs of the people of TWISP in the face of disaster. Now, I'm looking to bring my record of strong leadership to Olympia as your state representative to preserve the way of life our families have enjoyed here for generations. I'm Suing Moody, and I'm asking for your vote because we shouldn't have to give up anything to live here, and we won't. The Brave Warrior Project, a local nonprofit that supports families and individuals affected by disabilities and chronic illness, recently raised $130,000 at the third annual Shine a Light auction on September 28th. The event was held at Omi Gardens and featured a margarita wall, both a live and silent auction of donated items, a live performance by warriors from the organization, and a testimonial from Brave Warrior Project parent Stephanie Gates. The evening also included an honorary award presented to Rufus Woods for his commitment and support to the organization. About 190 people attended. The Wenatchee Public Library is hosting a live stream with a best-selling author on Thursday. The library will virtually welcome Erica Sanchez, whose debut novel, I Am Not Your Perfect Mexican Daughter, was a number one New York Times bestseller. The novel is a National Book Awards finalist, a Tomas Rivera Award winner, and is being adapted into an MGM Orion film directed by actress America Ferreira. Sanchez, a daughter of Mexican immigrants, lives Lives in Chicago with her family and holds an honorary doctorate in humane letters from New York School. The 45-minute live stream will be held in the Sagebrush Meeting Room in the library beginning at 6 p.m. on Thursday, October 10th. Saturday marked the 93rd anniversary of the first non-stop Trans-Pacific flight from Misawa, Japan to East Wenatchee. On October 5, 1931, the Miss Vidal plane, flown by Clyde Pangborn and Hugh Herndon, flew from Sabashiro Beach in Misawa before crash landing in the bluffs of East Wenatchee. The historic flight launched a sister city relationship with Misawa that is now celebrated through the Wenatchee Valley Misawa Sister City Association by by annually swapping groups of delegates to promote cultural exchange. Coming up next, a closely watched race to replace departing Chelan County Commissioner Tiffany Gehring comes down to an experienced campaigner against a first-time candidate, both of them looking for new opportunities. We'll have more in tonight's feature story. Expect sunny and warmer than normal temperatures through Wednesday. I'll have all the details coming up in your full local weather forecast. That and much more still to come tonight. Please stay with us. A ductless unit from Carrier can keep anyone comfortable. Take Shelly, for instance. She finds me time in her new attic turned home gym. And with her Carrier ductless unit, the temperature is always perfect, no matter how intense her workout gets. Carrier, total comfort, totally happy. Turn to the experts, Carrier and Alpine Air. Heat and air, call Alpine Air. At Abby's, it's kind of simple. We're not rocket scientists, we just make great pizza. When you're ready for traditional values, time with your family, and a great meal, you're invited to Abby's. Order at abbeys.com. Our family is here for your family. It's fall. Want a great value that doesn't involve pumpkin spice? Try Abby's Barbecue Chicken Pizza. Save and enjoy a pizza with loads of quality toppings to the edge. Your taste buds and your wallet will thank you. Enjoy Abby's October special at a very special price. Hi, this is Brad Hawkins, and I'm running to be your next Chelan County Commissioner. I'm very proud to have grown up in Wenatchee, and now to be raising a family my own here. From Washington Elementary to Washington State Capitol, I've gained valuable experiences in my life and career, and I look forward to bringing it to the county. 
Serving as a county commissioner is a complex job. We need and deserve a proven, experienced leader. I'd be honored to have your vote. I'm Jim Heinlein, and I've been working with you all for about 20 years now. And it's safe to say I've seen most every situation as it relates to annual election period. This AP is going to be like a tsunami. It's not tall, but it's huge in effect. And when the water retreats, you're going to see the damage to those who didn't react properly. So what is a proper reaction? Well, call a local insurance professional like Springwater Insurance. We have already developed a strategy for those of you who need a change. Give us a call at 509-888-2600. In tonight's feature story, a closely watched race to replace departing Chelan County Commissioner Tiffany Gehring comes down to an experienced campaigner against a first-time candidate, both of them looking for new opportunities. Brad Hawkins is a retiring state senator for the 12th Legislative District who saw his district redrawn and opted to move into the commissioner's race instead. Flint Hartwig is a retiring builder and developer running his first political race. Both, like Gehring, are Republicans facing off in the November 5th elections. And CW Life News interviewed both candidates simultaneously in our studios last month. You can watch the full version of this interview on our website and right here on this channel after our news broadcast tonight. What issues do you think, as a candidate, are crying out to be addressed in Chelan County that you think you could deal with well as commissioner. And you have two minutes for this answer. Okay, well, first and foremost, I think that the building department needs to tune up. It's too hard to get permits right now. We're building the Alethea Riding Center and it took us seven months to get a permit with exactly one comment back as a question. So um, we, need to, we need to kind of reorganize that department a little bit, get that moving. I feel like we're in a bit of a housing crisis right now. We're building about 60% of the houses that we were uh, just a few years ago and that's gonna to translate to bigger problems in the future. Uh, I have plans to do small houses that would um, sell for around $250,000, and so far the city of Intiat has agreed to, to entertain, that, entertain that project. I also see a um, uh, budget crisis coming down the pipe because uh, right now we're living off 2022 uh, valuations, and the 2023 valuations came out, they're a little bit less, so there's gonna to have to be some tightening of the budget, and that's uh, something I would be particularly good at. And also law enforcement needs um, all the help they can get, so I'm basically just a essential roles of government kind of guy. I want the smallest, most efficient government we can have, and um, so we're talking about potholes, you know, roads, um, and also just want to reduce waste everywhere I can. I think my business background specifically is going to be a strong um, it would be my strong suit. I'm very good at managing money and I'm very good at managing people and I'm very good at getting results. So um, all my experiences have counted on that. If I'm gonna have a successful company, I, I have to get results when money is spent and I, and I have to hold people accountable. So the big difference um, for me is just gonna be, um, you know, be a different, a different scene, but the same principles apply. So I just want efficiency, I want the smallest government we can have. First off, we are blessed to live in Chelan County. It's a beautiful place, but it isn't without its challenges. I think we need to continue to grow and diversify our county economy so that we can maintain a balanced budget and maintain the county services. Uh, I do see some issues with valuations, but also with potential flattening of our sales tax revenue. And the county receives a substantial amount of revenue for its budget from sales tax and, and property taxes. Um, and if we can continue to grow and diversify the county economy and maintain a balanced budget, we can hopefully help mitigate the growing property taxes that people are experiencing all throughout Chelan County. We do have challenges with affordable housing. We have some human services, uh, human service issues as well with homeless and a significant amount of fentanyl now coming into the county. Um, but I think the biggest issue crying out to Chelan County is uh, our wildfire risk. And when we look at wildfire, we have to kind of look at two things. One is the initial firefighting and fire suppression, and then also the long-term strategic effort to reduce the fuels within Chelan County. Uh, Chelan County has a vast amount of federal lands and we um, you know, are really susceptible to uh, 
lightning strikes and human caused fire. So if we can continue to figure out a way where we can put out the fire soon after they start, rather than just managing them once they get burning and strategically thin the forest, removing the small diameter trees, clearing out the underbrush, treating the landscape, uh, the landscape with prescribed fire, uh, we can help generate some economic activity from, from the forest. But uh, I bet all of those things, uh, along with some others, are challenges to Chelan County. But uh, like I said, we are blessed to live here. Time now for a check of your North Central Washington weather forecast. Hope you had a fantastic weekend and a great start to this week. And boy, what a beautiful weekend we had yesterday. 70 degrees and very nice out there. Sunday, upper or Saturday, upper 60s. And we did better than that today. We'll talk about that in a second. But look at this shot. What beautiful early October weather we are having right now. All kinds of blue sky out there. Looking down at the Wenatchee Valley, Farmer Wenatchee Heights Sky Fi Tower our camera and yeah our weather is going to continue just like this tomorrow is going to be even a little bit warmer than today a bit of a cool off on Wednesday but still very nice we're talking temperatures in the 70s and we are going to see low temperatures for us pretty much near 50 degrees throughout that period and then a little dip in our temperature and then nice right back by the time we get into the upcoming weekend all that coming up in a second 73 our unofficial high temperature today beautiful 66 is normal and 84 is our record. That was set back in 2014. We were at 50 this morning. 45 is where we should be this time of year for a low. And our record, 32 degrees set in 1990. Sunrise this morning, 709, and it sets tonight at 627. Okay, your Tuesday temperatures now, and doesn't even look like early October, does it? 76s and 75s all over the board. 76 for Moses Lake. Of Freda, Quincy, Wenatchee, through Eniat into Chelan, also OMAC at 76, and then a big group of 75s, Ellensburg, Cashmere, and Leavenworth, and Lake Wenatchee, the cool spot, but still awfully nice for this time of year, 72 tomorrow afternoon. Tonight, mostly clear and mild. We are seeing just a little bit of a ridge still up and over most of the western United States. Talking lows tonight, mainly in the lower 50s. For your Tuesday, that ridge ridge will intensify. A few clouds will move into western Washington along a very weak cold front, but not going to cool us down. We're going to see high temperatures tomorrow in the mid 70s, which will be about seven degrees above where we should be for Wednesday. Large area of high pressure out in the Pacific and more of a westerly flow. So we'll cool down just a little bit under mostly sunny skies. High temperatures Wednesday right around that 70 degree mark. And then for Thursday, an area of low pressure begins to push on shore. We'll see more of a northerly flow on Thursday and that will cool us down. We're talking highs Thursday in the mid 60s, so still not cold by any means, just a little bit cooler. By Friday, mostly cloudy skies. That low pushes inland a little bit. The weather service is talking about a 20 to 30 percent chance of rain. This model doesn't bear that out, so we'll kind of wait and see throughout the week. High temperatures Friday in the mid 60s and then and this weekend, folks, it is going to be beautiful. High pressure. Here's the top of that ridge once again. Going to bring us sunny skies with high temperatures on Saturday in the low 70s. And even better as we get you into the end of the forecast on Sunday. Very little wind whatsoever. Sunny skies Sunday. Look at that. High temperatures in the mid 70s. All right, your seven day forecast 51 overnight tonight. Mostly sunny both Tuesday and Wednesday. 76 Tuesday. We will cool off on Wednesday to about 70 and then we're going to keep that cooling trend going on Thursday and Friday with high temperatures with some clouds in the mid 60s. And then I'll tell you what this weekend going to be beautiful sunny skies both Saturday and Sunday 71 your high Saturday and 74 on Sunday. And that's a look at your North Central Washington weather forecast coming up next tonight's sports report with Eric Grandstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. Hi, I'm Mike Steele, and I've been honored to serve you as our state representative for District 12 for the last eight years. With experience in several leadership roles in civic organizations, as well as being a lifelong resident, I've championed projects that have made a difference in our community. I plan to continue the progress we've made together. 
Re-elect Mike Steele, your voice in Olympia. Together, we can achieve more. Visit votemikesteele.com. Paid for by the citizens to elect Mike Steele. I'm Jen Mueller. Watch for my show, I Cook You Measure on NCW Life. It's part cooking instruction, part entertainment, and all about connecting over food and wine with your favorite Northwest athletes. Watch I Cook You Measure with Jen Mueller Mondays at 1, Wednesdays at 2, Fridays at 11 a.m., and Saturday and Sundays at 10.30 p.m. Right here on the NCW Life channel. Want to stay up to date on the latest news in the area? Tired of paying for your news? Download the NCW Life app now. No subscriptions necessary. Get news, weather, sports, and more live as it happens. Available for iPhone and Android in the App Store. Local news at your fingertips. Don't miss the stories that matter to you. Stay connected. Download the NCW Life app now. Another fall sports season is upon us. Yes, we'll be talking about East Watt football, but also volleyball and girls soccer. Be sure and join us for the East Watt Wildcats all season long right here on the NCW Life Channel, your local TV station. Coverage is presented by Alpine Air Heating and Cooling, Kennedy Real Estate Group, Les Schwab, Sangster Motors, Save Mart, Together for You, and Valley Tractor. And a happy Monday to you. The Seahawks came up short in all three phases of the football game Sunday in a 29-20 loss to the New York Giants. Seattle was more than a touchdown favorite against a team coming in with just one win on the season. Despite that, Seahawks laid a big fat egg in Sunday's defeat. Coach Mike McDonald says it was one of those games where Seattle took it on the chin. Talk about not doing things in all three phases to win a football game. Uh, give, give, Got to give the Giants credit. Uh, they, out, they outplayed us today. And with that said, you know, we gave ourselves a chance to tie the game and even win it there at the end of the fourth and uh, and came up short. So message the message is, is we don't got enough time to sit around and, and uh, you know, put our heads down. We got to keep our heads up, take it on the chin, move forward. So we got a game uh, in, what is it, three or four days and uh, we need to be ready to go. So we need to get better in a hurry. Geno Smith was even more direct in his assessment of the game where Seattle's offense held the ball for just eight minutes in the first half. Do we play back? I mean, that's the reality. We played bad. Um, I don't think we executed well. I thought we, uh, we came out slow. We talked about starting fast. That's not how we want to start. And then um, turning the ball over, um, you know, not finishing drive. I mean, all of the above, you know, to get you beat. It's the NFL any given Sunday. Smith threw for 284 yards and a touchdown on the day. Seattle turns around and hosts San Francisco on Thursday Night Football, only available on Prime Media. Well, the Huskies were able to pull off the upset of 10th-ranked Michigan Saturday in Seattle. Will Rogers completed 21-31 to 31 passes, 271 yards, a couple of touchdowns and a pick in Washington's 27-17 victory. Meanwhile, Kennedy McGill led Central Washington to a 44-28 win at Eastern New Mexico. McGill threw for 165 yards and three touchdowns while rushing for 114 yards and another score in the Wildcat victory. For those paying attention to the wildcard playoffs in Major League Baseball, uh, Philadelphia walked off against the Mets to tie that best of five series, uh, National League wildcard series at a game apiece with the 7-6 win. San Diego hit six homers and a 10-2 win over the Dodgers to even that series at a game apiece. Cleveland was hosting Detroit today while the Royals were in New York to take on the Yankees. The Wenatchee Wild dropped to two and three on home ice with a couple of losses in the Wolves' den over the weekend. Victoria came into town and blanked the Wild Saturday. Three zip. Wenatchee took Kamloops to overtime yesterday before falling in the extra frame 2-1. The Wild head for Victoria for a couple of games this weekend before returning home Friday, October the 18th. Well, Eastmont converted two second half interceptions into touchdowns and ran away with the Bridge of Sportsmanship. 42-24 over Wenatchee Saturday. The highlights of the game, well, we'll watch a little bit of 
them right here. Sophomore quarterback Peyton Zelensky rushed for a touchdown, while freshman brother Austin and Bodie Yale each rushed for a couple of scores for East Block. They improved to 4-1 and one on the season. Ryan Branham rushed for a touchdown and threw for another, but was intercepted twice in the second half as Wenatchee fell to 1-4. and four. Moses Lake remained unbeaten in Big 9 play with a 49-zip win over Eisenhower. Sunnyside beat West Valley. Davis won a non-league game against West Valley. After a tightly fi uh, fought, spirited first quarter, Royal gained control of its matchup with Cashmere Friday night and rolled to a 55-14 victory. Lance Allred threw for four touchdowns and ran for four others as he accounted for 472 yards of offense in the Knights uh, as they improved for 5-0 on the season. Ryland Hatmaker was held in check following a stellar first quarter, finishing with 173 yards passing, two touchdowns, and an interception. Cashmere dropped to 4-1 and one with the loss. Other winners in the SCAC Friday included Zilla, Connell College Place, and Grandview won its non-leaguer against Waluke. Uh, Prosser blew out Quincy 58-zip in Seawack Place. Sela top top it ish It was Othello over East Valley. Ellensburg edged Grandview 19-7. Okanagan beat up Chelan 57-7. OMAC blasted Brewster. Cascade came out on top of Tenasket 28-14. To 2B football Friday, Manson beat Lake Roosevelt 42-28. And they act in Waterville Mansfield each posted victories in 1B football Friday. Tigers beat Oroville. The Shockers got by Bridgeport. When Anchi stayed unbeaten in Big Nine Girls Soccer on Saturday, the Panthers blanked Sunnyside on the road 3-0. Moses Lake vis uh, visited East Block, came away with a 2-1 win, afraid of blast Bridgeport 6-0. Quincy shut out Toppenish. Cashmere crushed College Place. Tenasca topped Colville. Davenport blanked Lake Roosevelt. There were a lot of three-set sweeps in prep volleyball on Saturday. It was Cashmere over College Place. Chelan beat Meridian and Nooksack Valley. Nooksack Valley and Meridian turned around and took it out on Okanagan. Omax swept Medical Lake. Lakeside Nine Mile Falls blank Brewster. Waterville Mansfield swept Soap Lake. While Anna Ed to Moses Lake Christian also straight set winners. That's sports. I'm Eric Grandstrom. Have a happy Monday. Hi, everybody. Dan Coos, host of Wake Up at Anchee Valley. Tune in tomorrow morning, Tuesday. Got a great profile for you. You know about K9 Maverick, the brand new drug detecting dog. From the East Wenatchee Police Department, our very own Casey Safford had a chance to visit with Chief Rick Johnson, who helped expedite Maverick's arrival on the law enforcement scene, and Jordan Connolly, Officer Connolly, who is Maverick's K9 handler. Another tool in the war on drugs is a dog, and you're going to learn all about it on tomorrow's Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Tune in. And that will do it for our newscast tonight. For more news from around North Central Washington, you can find us at ncwlife.com, on our social media channels, or on our mobile app for iPhone and Android. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. Email us at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks so much for being with us and have a great night. Building your business is easy and affordable with television and digital marketing options from NCW Live Channel. Target your market with NCW Live's managed advertising programs that save you time, money, and give you great results. 